All right, folks, what's going on? Earthmaster here, November 30th, 2000, 2018. 2.47 p.m. here, my time, West Coast time, United States. And, uh, of course, I'm sure you've heard by now, a pretty good-sized earthquake struck right around the Anchorage, Alaska region there. Earlier this morning, uh, kicking off a magnitude 7.0 earthquake and triggering a tsunami warning from, uh, well, from at least one tsunami warning center, while the other one stated there was no tsunami threat. It ended up being uh, canceled after uh, there was no tsunami. So, uh, you know, just got to be careful where you get your information from out there, folks. A lot of a lot of uh, agencies um, are, uh, well, you think they'd be... Uh, uh, within the same common ground of issuing out warnings, but on this one, uh, one stated that there was a warning for uh, certain areas in Alaska, and, and the other one stated that there was none. So anyway, uh, either way, 7.0 magnitude earthquake, very strong, powerful earthquake right around the Anchorage, Alaska region, and uh, about this time last year, I was actually, in fact, up in Anchorage, Alaska, doing some sightseeing up there, uh, flew in there, uh, in the Anchorage, uh, beautiful, beautiful airport, absolutely beautiful. If you've never been to uh, the Anchorage airport, you gotta check it out at least once in your life. Uh, very, very colorful. Just let me say that. Uh, lots of uh, it's almost like being in the museum. But anyway, um, so yeah, um, powerful earthquake up there. I'm just glad I wasn't up there uh, right around that time when it happened. Um, no words on any injuries or fatalities yet. I really haven't looked at that department. Um, I know there is some uh, structural damage and also some damage to uh, areas, highways, uh, and, and even around the airport. I believe it's a Ted Stevens Airport up there that uh, experienced some uh, uh, roads that are kind of like broke off, you know, kind of like down the hillside. Um, so a lot, a lot of shaking. Uh, with this earthquake here and a lot of people felt it. Anchorage is a pretty big city, a uh, really big city actually. I was kind of surprised to see it that big uh, from my, uh, with my own eyes. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a major city and uh, it's, there's some old buildings up there for sure and some older highways. But uh, you know, hopefully uh, everything's good. But anyway, they've had quite a bit of aftershock activity, let me tell you. And this is gonna continue for quite some time. Uh, with this magnitude of earthquake, 7.0 is a good shaker, uh, and there's aftershocks sure to follow um, in the coming days, weeks, if not, um, could be a year, two years, um, if, you know, aftershock activity could continue in that area for that extensive amount of time. Um, this here is the USGS map of 2.5 earthquakes and above. And uh, this is showing the overview of the Anchorage uh, area where the earthquake took place down here. You can see Anchorage right within reaching view of that uh, of that earthquake. They're pretty, pretty, pretty powerful. You know, it's just amazing. Uh, we did, of course, we've seen some activity just south of here over the past couple of weeks. Uh, nothing major. Nothing. You know that would point out to uh, an impending major earthquake. This is, you know, something that just happens in plate tectonics here. Uh, just, you know, sometimes you get a couple warning shakes. Sometimes you don't. Right now on the map, there's 62 earthquakes here within the region of the earthquake map that you see on the globe or on the uh, screen here, um, and that number will dra dramatically rise as well. The largest earthquake that I'm seeing in that. Uh, aftershock act activity there's quite a few of them uh, don't get me wrong there's quite a bit but the largest one i'm seeing right now in this list was a 5.7 aftershock activity uh earthquake i should say following that 7.0 so 5.7 uh, being the largest aftershock but there's been quite a few fours quite a few fives uh, many many threes and uh, you know the list just goes on and on uh, of course, there is always a potential for another larger earthquake, roughly around that size or bigger. Um, I know they've had some big ones up there in Alaska in the past. And, um, you know, that will be that way in the future as well. But uh, there's always a chance that uh, we could see a larger earthquake in the vicinity. Uh, of course, over 
uh, as we close in on a 24-hour window there, the, the activity or that chance of activity tends to drop down dramatically and the percentage goes down. Uh, but either way, we could see some uh, aftershock activity, fairly large, um, over the next coming days and weeks. So just be on guard, stay alert. Um, and, uh, you know, if you haven't already, get some uh, uh, emergency supplies and food and stuff like that in the generator if you have it. I know this type of this time of year up there, you know, a lot of snow and uh, some cold weather for sure. So just best to be prepared uh, in the event that, uh, you know, something else could happen up there. So just be on guard, folks. Uh, I want to show you guys a little image here real quick of the plate tectonics in action here. There's no conspiracy. There's no uh, man-made earthquake here with this Anchorage, Alaska earthquake. It's just plate tectonics in general. Something we, we all studied, I believe, in elementary school, right? Um, that map, you know what? I'm not going to go with that map. Let's go with uh, this one here. This is the arrow. This is not the magic arrows that you see on another YouTube channel, but this is more or less similar to the plate tectonic features that you're seeing on this map right here. Just more arrows. So please don't get confused in that picture. Uh, the arrows at hand here show the direction and general direction of plate movements, subduction zones, and plate boundaries here with the Pacific plate being the largest plate here um, which extends kind of up into Alaska uh, you can take a look up the uh, Alaska um, Peninsula up there around the uh, Anchorage area you can see kind of where the Pacific plate uh, extends up to the north with pressure coming down from from the north so you got the plate kind of going northwest uh, the Pacific plate sorry going to the northwest with the um, a lot of pressure uh, from the uh, what is that the Arctic plate I believe up there coming from the north I do want to read a little statement here from the USGS in regards to the activity that took place today and uh, you can always check it out here on the USGS channel as well at earthquake.usgs.gov um, I'm gonna go ahead and read a little bit of this activity right here um, Actually, what I'll do, I'll, I'll bring this up here so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about as well. Direct. Um, so we'll go over here and we'll click on this baby and it brings up a 7.0. Of course, this was originally set at, I believe, a 7.2. Then they downgraded it to a, uh, a 6.6, .6, I believe. Okay, that's not going to do. I still haven't changed my transparent transparency um, a window on that but I'll go ahead and read it from my view here uh, it says the November 30th 2018 MW 7.0 earthquake near Anchorage Alaska occurred as the result of normal faulting at a depth of about 40 kilometers focal mechanisms solutions for the event indicate slip occurred on a moderately dipping fault striking north-south um, either dipping ab about 30 degrees east or about 60 degrees west. Um, at, that at that location of this earthquake, the Pacific Plate is moving towards the northwest, like I mentioned with the arrows right there, with respect to the North American Plate at about 57 mm uh, per year. I'm guessing that's millimeters per year. That doesn't seem like a lot. I'll have to check on that. Subducting beneath Alaska and the Alaska Aleutian Trench approximately 150 kilometers south southeast of this event so you got the subduction uh, 150 kilometers southeast of the epicenter of the 7.0 that struck today the location and the mechanism of this earthquake indicate rupture occurred on an insta flat insta slab fault within the subducting pacific slab rather than on the shallower thrust faulting interface between these two plates so the location and the mechanism of this earthquake indicate rupture occurred on an intra-slab fault within the subducting Pacific slab, rather than on the shallower thrust faulting interface between these two plates. Earthquakes are common in this area, very common. Over the past century, 14 other M6.0 earthquakes have occurred within 150 kilometers of this event that occurred today. Two of these, a M6.6 .6 earthquake in July of 1983 and a M6.4 event in September of 1983, were at a similarly, 
shallow depth and cause damage in the region of Valdez. The M, everyone knows this one, right? The M 9.2 Great Alaskan Earthquake of March 1964 was an interface thrust faulting earthquake that ruptured over several hundred kilometers between Anchorage and the Alaska Aleutians Trench and to the southwest. So, you know, no doubt common earthquake activity, but we just haven't seen this type of activity since the early 80s. Um, now, the big one, 9.2, of course, occurred back in 1964. They're famous for big earthquakes up there, folks. Uh, the best thing to do wherever you're at, earthquake country, tornado country, you know, hurricane country, you, you, you do what? You get prepared and stay prepared all year round because no one knows when it's going to strike um, and no one knows or can predict when an earthquake is going to hit. It's simple. It's not going to happen. Nobody out there is a magic magician and going to state that. So some might attempt to. Um, and then on the other hand, when we do have earthquakes of this size, yeah, you kind of tend to pay attention to past events, right? Like, um, I can't name any offhand, but whenever we see large magnitudes, there's always that chance of a bigger earthquake. So not predicting a bigger earthquake, all I'm saying is basically just be alert, be on guard, be on guard for the next 24 hours of a possible larger earthquake activity, especially in a subducting area like that. We don't know what type of stress that applied on other fault systems. It may have relieved some down to the south, or it may have uh, it may have increased pressure in a different area. So who knows? We just it's best to be prepared. Uh, the earthquake um, watch should always be going on, right? Whenever you're in an earthquake area, prone area. Um, so yeah, like I say, um, you know, this earthquake is pretty pretty powerful. I mean. 40 kilometers below the surface is not super shallow. Good thing it's not shallower, but at that level, um, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, was felt all over Anchorage for sure in, in many areas. I guess they felt it kind of up around the Anchorage or the uh, Fairbanks, Alaska region as well. So anyway, folks, uh, the rest of the globe around the area, let's go ahead and take a look at the earthquake activity around the world right now. Of course, many aftershocks are going to start ringing up here, folks. I do have a live graph, a live seismograph station in the Alaska region near Kodiak, Alaska. Uh, let me see if you guys can see that real quick. That's going to be this station that's just coming up on the graph here right now. That station right there. Um, that's a, a good local station for the region there to keep an eye on the activity as far as live activity comes in um, and these are all live seismograph stations right here around the globe but anyway I'll see if I can find something a little bit closer to the Anchorage area uh, but for now we'll use the Kodiak Islands uh, region uh, seismograph the rest of the globe looking pretty quiet and pretty mellow folks we did have that 4.2 earthquake off the coast of Oregon um, before, let's bring this down a little bit. Before uh, that 7.0 earthquake struck, not for sure why these are turning red already. It should be a 24-hour a window here um, before it does fall off the globe. But anyway, 4.7 earthquake over here around the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, very deep earthquake right there, 344 kilometers below the surface. Um, the rest of the world looking pretty quiet, folks. Pretty mellow. Um, nothing major to report. In fact, abnormally quiet. Um, so, yeah. Just be on guard, folks. Stay safe out there. Um, you know, we're going to see aftershock activity coming into this region for quite some time. Um, I'm not going to shrink the globe too tiny in order to pick up all these aftershocks um, because it is kind of up there on the top of the globe. But I will keep it uh, kind of angled down a little bit so we can pay... Uh, uh, a little bit more attention to the aftershocks and uh, detailed of the earthquake activity up there in the Anchorage, Alaska region. So for now, folks, uh, we'll get back to the live stream um, and uh, yeah, just play it safe out there. Peace out.